everybody and a very warm welcome back to the latest episode of Hidden Jewels of Soul and Disco. When we did our soul stream about Southern Soul, I got at least three mails from you guys mentioning a name which should absolutely be considered when discussing Southern Soul. Because this artist has always been overlooked, hardly been mentioned and should be considered as one of the greatest soul singers of all time which probably nobody really heard of, or at least for one or two songs. Therefore, this week we are featuring James Carr. Why changing management in the early 70s turned out to be a really bad decision by Mr. Carr, and why he froze in front of an audience in 1979, well, we'll discuss this after some needle drops. Then you've got And baby You let me get away Yeah You let me get away James was born in 1942, and when he was three years old, he moved with his parents to Memphis. So you can imagine where his musical roots began in gospel music. And there's one group worth mentioning where he took part, and this is Harmony Echoes. And also one member of that group is O.V. Wright. If O.V. is not ringing a bell to you, don't worry, we will be covering him in another episode. So anyway, James tried his luck to become a professional musician. He had the voice. So what he did was he auditioned for Stax. And you know what happened? They turned him down. So there was a new label founded around that time, which was called Gold Wax. And the founder of that label, Quentin Clouch, and I hope I spelled him correct. He was sitting in his living room, it was after midnight, when suddenly there was banging on his door and he was like, what's going on? He opened the door and there were three guys standing in front of his door holding up some reel-to-reel -reel tapes. And these guys were James Carr, Ori Wright and Roosevelt Jameson. Roosevelt was, or later became, a manager, but was at that time a songwriter. And they said, hey, we cut some demos, please have a listen to them. So they went into his living room, put on the tapes and pressed the play button. And Quentin was totally impressed. And he said, you know, guys, what? We're going to release this. And everybody was like going crazy. But there was one problem with OV, right? OV was already on a contract with Duke Records. And this label was, um, was, was yeah, being watched, being operated by Don Robbie. And Don Robbie was known as a guy to not fool around with. He always carried a gun with him, especially when there were contract questions and all of this. So Quinton was like, Obi, I'm sorry. I'm not risking here anything. I don't know what's going to happen. So we can't do i can't work with you i can't release your material so what i can do is to make sure that nothing's going to happen so he asked the local police to have an eye on Ovi to make sure that don was not doing something bad nothing happened to it so quentin totally concentrated himself on james who was at that time working on an assembly line for a furniture company. James married very early on, had five kids, so he had to make sure to put butter and bread on the table. In total, he recorded for Goldwax 28 songs and also released two full albums. In 1967, he released the album You've Got My Mind Messed Up which also became a nationwide hit. If you want to have an original of this album, 
it doesn't go for cheap. You really have to get deep into your pockets to find a decent copy nowadays. In 1968, he released an album and in this album, there was his signature song, the song he's been always with, associated with, and who became a huge, huge soul hit. Not at the time when it was released, but it, it's been constantly being played nowadays. And James is nowadays finally getting the recognition he should have gotten all along. But the song I'm talking about is The Dark End of the Street. And um, today I want to talk about the album where the song was released off. And this is A Man Needs a Woman from 1968. You heard some snippets in the beginning of this album and also, if you want to find a clean copy of this album, you need to begin with $150 and $200 to find a decent copy. I had luck, I found a copy in shrink, but um, usually I'm not such a big fan of shrink copies because when there are decades in the shrink, um, most likely they have been warped, but I had luck. But there was one thing I want to point out to you guys is, can you see that? drill hall. Can you see that hole there? Um, yeah, that's a discount mark. And when I was getting the record, I was uh, opening it up and I was looking like on the back and I said, what's this hole? And it's also on the front. And I was like, oh my God, I hope it's not uh, through the uh, uh, through the playing part of the record. But I was lucky. Somebody who did this had really or didn't, or didn't know what he was doing because the hole is hope you can see that in the label so um yeah show you the label if we are already at this part hold on i show you this is the gold wax label and dying end of is a tremendously tremendously good song and um it was also written by chips Moman and recorded at the american sound studios and if you are familiar um or not familiar with the studio, this studio became legendary. It wasn't there for a long time, but some legendary albums were there recorded. Aretha Franklin, um, Dusty Springfield recorded her, uh, her, in my opinion, her greatest album of all time, Dusty in Memphis, also been uh, done with Chips Moman and uh, Petula, you know, the word Memphis came in. Um, Petula, Clark, Memphis, and also if you are an Elvis fan, you will know that Elvis recorded some, in my opinion, uh, back from the 50s material, uh, which I also cherish a lot, in my opinion, one of his best material ever. And this is, um, can you see that? Um, back in Memphis and uh, from Elvis. In Memphis so uh, and this is if you're interested in it a compilation of the whole studio stuff he did at the American Sound Studios a legendary studio and if James Carr cut some tracks up there and also if Chips Moment was involved with it you can be sure that this is an absolutely stunning track and it is this whole album is from the beginning to the end an absolute gold mine if you see it somewhere go and grab it. If you see this other album, go and get it. You won't be, you won't be disappointed. Let's get back to the, que the questions at the beginning. Business decision. So what hardly anybody knew is that James, well, he had a deep bipolar disorder. He was also manic, he had manic depressions. So you can imagine for an upcoming and rising star and also back in those days where the medication wasn't so far as it is today, um, putting the stress of touring, of getting into the studio, of doing PR things and all of this is putting a toll on you. So that became quite difficult. And also in the beginning of the 70s, he decided to fire Jameson 
who knew about his sickness and who also knew like like Quentin how to handle him if that's the right word so um, yeah he fired him and replaced him with Larry Uttal who was the boss at Bell Records who also did the distribution for example with this album Larry didn't know anything about the sickness and also might have made promises he really couldn't fulfill so what happened is that James later on got into a deep, deep depression. In the late 70s, especially in 1979, when he did touring in Japan, he stood frozen in front of an audience and he hardly knew where he was, and what he was doing. And um, there might have been some problems with the medication, but his disease, his sickness really, really got him. So when he returned from that tour, he lived with his sister and really wasn't doing much. That changed. In 1986, Peter Goralnik, and also once again, if you're an Elvis fan, uh, Peter Goralnik released a book which was called Sweet Soul Music, where he also mentions James. So Peter Goralnik also wrote these two Elvis books. Our Last Train to Memphis and Carlos Love, which are, in my opinion, one of the best biographies um, of Elvis Presley, but he also did them. And he mentioned James and that led to an opportunity for James. So Quinton got back in business with Goldbacks in the beginning of the 90s. So in 1991, he had the opportunity to release another album and this was called Take Me to the Limit. During recording, James was sitting there for hours, like not doing anything, just staring or smiling. And then he suddenly stood up and recorded in one take a tremendously good song. So he was still in this manic depression um, kind of yeah, situations, but he could function at that. And he, when he was up there, he nailed it. Unfortunately, this album didn't do much. Once again, he did a little touring on YouTube. You find some some footage of his his touring. And in my opinion, he still sounded amazing even up to that point. But by the mid 90s, he was diagnosed with lung cancer. And that was also the ultimate end to his career. Here you see a picture which I really like with James and Quinton taken in 1991. In 2001, James died because of, of the terrible, terrible disease he was having and he lost his fight with cancer. And nowadays, with people getting more into soul, with the northern soul scene, he's been remembered and he's been played and I think that's such a, such a great thing to do because there are so many artists out there who produce such a great value, so much great music, and they might have been always forgotten or never been talked about, and nobody will ever hear their music. And so I think it's always very touching to have these kind of stories where finally, after so many years, people get the recognition they deserve. So once again, if you have the ch chance to find something of James Carr, um, there's also a Japanese album which came out by the late 70s. It's not cheap, once again. It's uh, also over at least $100 to get. So if you have a chance, but there are compilations out there where this whole gold wax catalog is out there. So uh, go and get it. You find this album, you find the other album on Spotify, on YouTube, everywhere. So all I can say is give James a chance you won't regret it and if you find this album go and buy it if you are really a soul person you're really into soul music James Carr should absolutely be in your collection so to make a long sto story short thanks for watching listen to good music maybe James Carr, Carr and I'll see you next time goodbye <music>